to um, present here our preliminary stages of the research on analytic manufacturing of PET surrogates for impact analysis. Okay, so um, let's uh, motivate this, uh, this research. There is a clear necessity for some head surrogates for the analysis of impact on the head on several fields. Uh, for example, uh, the defense field, uh, sports, uh, professional sports, forensic sciences, etc. And uh, so far, standardized commercial surrogates present very low accuracy on different uh, parameters and, and, and head injury criteria and are very expensive. Uh, bone tissue is uh, known to be very variable in their properties depending on the position in the body and the function they are supposed to, to develop. So these standardized commercial surrogates have presented several times some discrepancies on what the actual behavior should have been. So we decided to try the 3D printed technology which is of course booming in every possible application. Uh, which uh, have the, also the possibility of uh, some very complex manufacturing and uh, these shapes that we are trying to obtain here for the head surrogates. We have a large variety of materials and properties uh, that is uh, presented to us so that we can select the ones that we are actually interested in. However, we have some drawbacks which are the mechanical properties are difficult to predict and very variable depending on the manufacturing strategies that we select. Uh, some previous work in the research group and the collaborators uh, presented uh, the head damage criteria. Um, here I am showing the different possibilities to, to study when we are focusing about the uh, head impacts and head uh, surrogate. And we are trying to focus right now in the skull fracture. As I said, this is the preliminary stages of our research. And the different uh, criteria that we can use the head injury criteria, maximum principal stress, etc. So, in order to be able to present the skull fracture and to simulate this, this fracture, we are trying to develop first the skull surrogate that will serve as the, as, the, um, as the principal object in which we will continue to develop the complete head surrogate. As I said, previous, research, previous work in these research groups showed some potential for the PLA material as a substitute for bone tissue uh, with uh, very, very similar properties depending on the different strategies to to manufacture the components, so we decided to select that material and move forward with it. Um, the uh, problem, as I said earlier, the PLA material, as any material in, in 3D printing technique, have a high variability of properties depending on the strategy that we select. However, it's very accessible, easy to print, uh, uh, not as expensive as commercial surrogates would have been, so it's uh, still a, a very interesting possibility. So our objective is to obtain a skull surrogate via 3D printing in which we will later on uh, add the brain mass surrogate, uh, the skin surrogate, etc. so that we complete the, the whole head. However, we need a careful examination of the process and how properties would vary depending on which strategy we select for this, uh, for this um, printing, for this, uh, for this skull surrogate. Since we need to add later on the brain mass we have to select how we will we'll, uh, print this tool so that we can later on fit the, the mask. So uh, we selected uh, three manufacturing strategies, three possibilities to, to print the, the school. Uh, one would be with the sagittal cut, which is the laser beam. Uh, this one. The sagittal cut, um, print the two halves separately, then uh, add the brain mass and, and, and adhere it together, glue it together. A coronal cut, and finally, a whole school. So we have to worry about how will the properties of this uh, of this component vary, because we know the orientation of layers is very important in the mechanical behavior of 3D printing components. So here we have the um, a brief video of how the, the sagittal cut components are, are printed. Okay, you can see how the layers are deposited, and of course the the orientation of the optimal orientation of the force in this case, uh, the, our prediction would be this would have been a, a good surrogate for all um, forces applied in the, in, the, in the direction of the surface vector of the layers. Uh, we also have here the, the coronal cut possibility. Again, our prediction would be this would have been a very good um, component for the, those forces applied in the direction of the surface vector. 
However, both these possibilities have, these strategies have a, a main drawback, which is we have to glue together two, two separate parts of the material, and we are going to have some uh, obstacles and some, some difficulties in the mechanical behavior of the adhesion zone. So we also presented this uh, whole school possibility with just a, a cut in the in a base zone to be able to introduce the, the brain mass, but that zone would not have been subjected to any force, so we would not worry about the additional sound over there. So uh, these were the experimental tests that, that we performed, the case of lateral compressive test and the frontal penetrating test in, the, in a universal instrument machine. So uh, as we said, uh, we have here in the lateral compressive test one skull that was, was printed with a sagittal cut and in the frontal penetrating test the cut is here so it's a, a frontal cut okay, and uh, well for the frontal penetrating test we have a, a specific tool in design and, and manufactured so that uh, we are consistent in further uh, work that will be done in the research group as we continue to develop okay, in this, this case so now to present the results I think that airport security did not prevent me from doing this. I have here to show you first hand our, our, our very mm, nicely manufactured school and also broken right now. So it's, uh, we were a bit uh, worried that Air Force Security will, will want to retain <laughs> this with them, but fortunately they posed no problem. So um, for the lateral compressive test, uh, we have here the, the setup that we had. Okay, we tried uh, two Skulls that were manufactured with this uh, sagittal uh, cut, and then we compare that to uh, a test done on the whole school painted. And uh, we have here the, the curves that we obtained, the force displacement curves. The first ones, which are the blue and the green one, correspond to the two skulls that were sagittally cut, and the two parts were adhered together. And the red curve, which uh, starts uh, quite earlier, corresponds to the whole school printing. Okay, so we can see a, 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 a large difference between the, these two strategies for printing the school. And uh, one of the main worries that we had was that the addition zone would be problematic for this component. However, we have here some, um, some pictures. This is the whole school. Uh, that was printed. Okay, you can see uh, the fracture that was formed in the along the school. It, it does not follow precisely the, the layer, the position of the school, which was something that we we were worried about as well. However, uh, in this case, uh, as we said, we have no uh, uh, worrisome addition zone. The addition would have been only just in the base uh, zone, in which we had cut so that we would be able to introduce the brain mass but it's not uh, involved in any of this, uh, of this fracture. Uh, well, you can see here the sagittal cap uh, skull was shattered to pieces. Uh, this was uh, the main thing that we recovered, everything else was uh, very small pieces. And the origination and the, the origin and the, the line of the fracture does not follow the addition zone. So that was one result that we were um, somewhat surprised and also happy to find that the, the addition zone was not the, the main worry about this, this, uh, this strategy. Uh, we have here, this is the, the other side of the sagittal cut. Okay? Uh, this one was the, okay, perhaps, no, these are, not, these are the two different sagittal cuts. However, this one was also shattered to pieces with a, a large portion missing on the other side. But from this side, you can see how the, the fracture went along the, the material. And this is the, the other side of the, of the previous one. Okay, and for the frontal penetrating test, which is the case of this skull over here, our, our little friend here, um, we have also two different, uh, two <coughs> coronal cut skulls against the one whole skull printed. And uh, in this case, the, the force displacement scores are quite similar, all the three of them, uh, there's not such a difference between them. Uh, with the, the behavior uh, until the, the first uh, penetration of the, of the tooling in the skull is, is practically uh, identical in, in all the three of them. And then we, you can see, uh, in this case, a blue line is the first school, the green line is the second school, 
And the third one, the, the purple one, is the whole school, the one that was not at year together. The first time in which the, the year tooling penetrates is the, the first drop in the, in the force. Um, and you can see that it correctly uh, corresponds. The behavior of the curves are, are all, all of them similar. The one difference that we found in this test was the type of fracture that we found. Okay, so uh, this is the, the coronal cut, okay, just as this one. Uh, this is the one of them and this is the other one, as you can see. Um, we have here some uh, visible fractures in the, in the zone of the, of the penetration. Okay, um, this is the, so that we can see the, the, the penetration of the, of the tooling. And this is the whole school which actually did not present any, any visible fracture, just uh, a penetration of the, of the, of the tooling. And the, well, the, the, there was some fracture of course because uh, it, it, there was a huge drop in the, in the force. But uh, it wasn't so, so, so visible as uh, in this case, our, our, our body here, personally. Okay, so um, in this case as well, uh, we were seeing that the, the fracture of the components was uh, related to the orientation of the layers, not so much with the uh, presence of an additional zone, which in this case is right here, as you can see in the, in the kernel and plane. So for the, this, uh, this study allowed us to, to plan ahead on the manufacturing strategies that we have to follow now, so that we can continue on with a complete head surrogate. So our conclusions were, were that the orientation of layers present more influence than the addition sound in the behavior of the components. So uh, the resistance capacity is higher in the direction of the material than traversing the positive layers, which is consistent with other studies. When uh, we are we're printing the whole school and we did the lateral test, of course, the, the force was exerted in the addition, between the addition of the layers, not the different zones. And uh, when it was against the vector surface of the layer, the, the resistance was higher. In front of penetrating test, the curve of process is very similar, but the fracture varies from half to whole school, as we were, as we were showing earlier. So the, the main uh, conclusion here, which uh, summarizes the, all the other ones, is that the bending orientation must be selected depending on the type of testing that will be performed, so that we cannot rely on one single school model for all the different tests that we want to do. So thank you for your attention. I hope I haven't been too clear. I still have some questions. I'm going to be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, now we have time for discussion. Um, but then, yes, please. Model validation for this kind of test. Well, we still are in the, in the preliminary stages, but the validation as uh, with any uh, biological tissue, is, uh, it's a critical um, aspect because, of course, uh, we are trying to develop these surrogates so as not to have to deal with biological tissues which pose some very ethical problems. But uh, we can rely on uh, using some animal models that, uh, which, whose uh, biological tissues are similar in mechanical properties to, to human. And uh, we will, of course, uh, validate these models to commercial surrogates until we can uh, at least uh, compare those. Okay. Uh, and it, yes. Well, okay. Do you have any uh, indication of how close you are with your results? Depending on the yes, on the on the bone properties. Yeah. Uh, well, in well, this you the, the skull test. Uh, yeah, but in this case, uh, we uh, this uh, presentation, I mean, the 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 data I present here is more focused on the manufacturing strategies than the PLA or PLA sorry, um, properties related to bone. But uh, as, as I said, uh, some work done in the in our research group uh, was relating the properties of the of the materials to the bone. So we have some uh, parameters and uh, strategies to assimilate the behavior to bone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I thought it out to use PLA because the bone, the living bone has a, a, has a rule of density of 50 gigapascals and the PLA only 3. Uh, so we have to, that your aim is to have a full heat, so again, to the vein, on the middle, on the, on the skin, whatever. And I'm not sure this is possible because the, 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 there is a big gap between the, 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 the general properties of your PLA and the bone. Yes, uh, well, a uh, 
we were worried about that as well uh, when, uh, when, we, when we first started uh, researching about the, the material and our aim to, to simulate bone. But um, the, depending on the type of test, the, the properties and the injury criteria that we're trying to focus on, okay, the, the fracture might be enough for us to simulate the, the test that we want to perform and to know whether or not our test would be damaging to, to a human person. Um, even though the, the huge gap in the elastic properties of the, of the bone and the material, uh, we are confident that we are reaching somewhere with, the, with our material. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, maybe just a last comment from my side. Um, so, you have talked about uh, validation using uh, bio material, but what about uh, numerical simulation? Because you can well, of course, uh, we're going to, to go forward in numerical simulations. Uh, the, this is the preliminary stage so that we know how to manufacture and the, the different strategies we have to follow to be able to, to obtain our head surrogate. But of course, we're going to have to use uh, numerical simulations of our material with the uh, human head simulations that are already ongoing. And eventually, with uh, whatever equipment we are trying to test, whether it was uh, for defense applications and helmets uh, or uh, professional sport helmets, etc. Thank you again. Thank you.